Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back. Troid Life Show episode 106 today. It is Friday, April 15th. I'm your host, Kellen. With me, Tim. Tim, say hi. Hey, guys. How's it going? Tim here. So on this episode, we're going to talk a lot about the HTC 10. So it's now official. Look, we, we have one. Yay. And uh, we spent the majority of the week with it, have lots of stuff to talk about with it. Uh, there's some early reviews already out for it, and most people have pretty good things to say about it. And I think, um, for the most part, I do too as well. I mean, the, I think HTC did a lot of really good things here. Um, so we'll go through that. Uh, the G5, our LG G5 review, is out, and I, think I have one of those sitting here too. G5. So we'll talk some final impressions here about the LG G5. We have a new Android N developer preview and uh some other stuff so we'll just we'll just kind of go through it talk about any other hot topics of the moment but uh let's start first with htc 10. so it was announced on tuesday morning right so uh htc didn't really do a typical press event actually there wasn't a press event uh they handed out some units in a pre-briefing style to a bunch of other sites um and so there was like hands-on and things like that uh, when they announced it. And so basically what happened was 8 a.m. Eastern on Tuesday, they just posted the phone on their site for pre-order uh, and listed some things. And then they sort of let the media who they gave early units to sort of take over and do their almost their PR for them, if you will. And so that was it. There wasn't a live stream video. So like with the A9, they did this sort of canned video announcement sort of thing um this they didn't even do that they went less announcements uh with this one than that so kind of an odd thing i think we both kind of made a comment about how it seemed like htc didn't really care that much and i, I think we say that because we're so used to every phone having an, an announcement of some sort an event of some sort and they just they didn't do that so whatever they're doing something new and all their money's in vr right now so maybe they just don't have the budget to uh talk about their phone i don't know either way it's official now so it's got all the specs we sort of thought uh it's not going to at&t which is kind of weird uh one of the biggest carriers second biggest carrier in the u.s not selling their phone is not necessarily a good sign um uh, other than that I don't know what are your i know you haven't held the phone yet but just when you sat back watched everything come in everything go on what was your sort of just first reaction well forgive us for thinking that htc was going to have some type of live stream or would actually you know put forth some type of effort to make the world aware that they had a new flagship coming you know i understand that yeah uh, they sent out a tweet saying, here it is. <laughs> like, okay, pretty underwhelming, but all right. <laughs> and yeah, like you said, you know, they they allowed the blogosphere to handle their marketing for them, which, uh, you know, I feel like companies have done in the past, but I see it as sort of a cop-out. Moving away from all of that uh, into the phone in general, I think it's pretty cool. The first, you know, leaks we saw, first of all, all the leaks we did see initially were spot on. All of them were correct. Yeah. So we've known what the phone would look like for you know a month and a half now or something like that, some crazy amount of time, which is pretty typical for HTC. But I, was, I wasn't really feeling the design. I first, you know, with all the chamfer, and someone actually said uh, not that long ago that they've never read the word chamfer or chamfered as much as they have, you know, thanks to all these Android phones coming out with chamfer. That's so, such a lie. Because the, the iPhone, what, 4 or 5 was all about that little chamfer, wasn't it? It had some good chamfer, but definitely not as prominent, I would say, at least as the HTC 10 has yeah, it. The 10 yeah, has... It's the king. Uh, it's the king of chamfer. Um, champ king. And I guess that's kind of growing on me. You know, I, I was actually saying I, I like the the black or the onyx or the dark gray spade, whatever they're calling it, the, the charcoal. Uh, I like the dark one because actually the, the, the chamfer isn't as sort of shiny i guess as it is on the silver one so you know the overall design i like uh, but again i'm not a big fan of front facing on the bottom chin the fingerprint and i'm definitely not a fan of capacitive buttons so kind of in my book at least from the overall design point of view i would say htc took a step backward uh but in terms of software and specs i would say they they did exactly what they should do you know they didn't try to overachieve 
uh, which some companies do, I think, in sort of, sort of I don't want to say fail, but sort of misstep a little bit. HTC put in the Snapdragon A20, 4 gigs of RAM, a uh, QHD display. So it's right on par with anything you're going to get from LG or Samsung or probably Motorola this year. Uh, the Nexus phones that came out last year, they're, they're spec'd a little bit higher than that. Although, um, same camera sensor, we believe, that was on the Nexus 6P and Nexus 5X. So overall, overall picture, I like what HTC is painting. Um but with regard to that, I guess I guess we'll see, right? I haven't I haven't played with the phone personally, um, but you've given me plenty of uh, of talk on it, and it seems to be okay, but not exactly what HTC needed to be like the new king in Android, right? It's not uh, they're not going to overtake Samsung with the ten or anything like that. And you know, Samsung brought everything that a HTC ten has, and then they went a little bit further. Uh, they they got the water resistance, which, which I think is huge now. Um, I, I don't really want a phone that doesn't have water resistance, like especially up here in the Pacific Northwest. We've got, had a lot of rain lately, and I'm outside. I can whip out my phone and not have to worry about a thing, but other phones that don't have it, maybe you should be careful. So beyond that, I think it's a good phone. I don't think it's the perfect 10 haha, or anything like that, <laughs> but uh, it's a good phone. And then on pricing, too, to release the phone for $699, ouch, um, that doesn't... That price point seems a little too high for what the phone is. I would have said $599, $549, and then it really would have been killer. And yes, there was that uh, the promo code where you can get $100 off. Hello, there's already a deal on the phone the first day it's announced. Um, yeah, I, I have some, some beef there. Like, so they announced the phone, $699, and we all kind of said, come on, you can't charge $700 for this. As good as it may be, you can't charge. That's iPhone 6S Plus almost pricing there. And HTC needs to make a splash. You got to make this phone, you know, a, a available to more people at a lower price. And so, not only did we complain about that, but they let that simmer for how many hours? Seven hundred bucks. And then all of a sudden, they spam off this email to all these HTC like uh, newsletter people with, "Oh, here's a hundred bucks off." And so there was this first wave of pre-orders, all at seven hundred bucks. And then hours later. Oh, here's a hundred bucks off. So like I had put in a pre-order for one immediately and I had to then email this digital river company, whoever they're using for their distribution, same company they use for Vive, which is not a compliment by the way, because our Vive order still hasn't shipped. But um, I then had to send an email and ask them to cancel because they didn't have a web interface where you could cancel your order and maintain it. And it took like three or four days. And I just, I think I got an email today that said, oh yeah, we finally canceled your order for 700 bucks. Uh, and so then I replaced an order the other day for 599. But anyways, not to go on about that forever, but yeah, that's kind of crappy. Like 700 bucks, let a bunch of people pre-order. Then, oh, well wait, we have a hundred dollar off coupon. Here you go. And yeah, it's just garbage. And like you said, you're already doing a discount on your phone. Obviously, that's that that six ninety nine is way more than you need to be charging if we're already slashing hundred bucks off on day one. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's sort of it's a disservice to you know those early adopters who are the big HTC fans, right? They go, they log in, they're like, oh man, man, this phone's awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and pre order. Come to find out, a couple hours later, you just spent an extra hundred bucks that you didn't need to. Yeah. Um, so that that's a slap in the face. Yeah. But again, like you said, you know, you could always just cancel and then redo. I mean, it's not like they're going to sell out of this thing. Um, so other than that, I think the phone looks cool. Um, a little bit later on, we'll get into why, how I think it could be maybe better, you know, if uh, if the whole Google and HTC works out this year for the Nexus thing. And But other than that, HTC 10 as it stands, I'm ready to get it in my hands, see how Sense 8 is. And... Uh, Actually, my my biggest thing on the phone is the are the wallpapers. I actually really like the wallpapers. That <laughs> yeah, you've been using those phone. right on your yeah. other devices. Yeah, so they look good. But um, yeah, other than that, good job HDC. Welcome. <laughs> I'm not gonna say welcome back. <laughs> it's not <laughs> like they not like they went anywhere. But uh, yeah, you know, I don't I don't think we're gonna be one of the news outlets to say welcome back HTC. <laughs> Greatest phone ever. You're back, baby. Like, come on, people. They haven't even sold the phone yet. You actually can't get it outside of entitled press. Like, you can't welcome HTC back. They're 2% of the market share. They're not coming back with this. I'm not saying this isn't a really good phone, because I think it is, but come on. Yeah. I, 
It's hard to say um, what will happen. I don't do, see. Do you think HTC, a phone they didn't even want to hold a press event for, is going to sell so many of these things that they're back? Like they're they're just back in the game. I mean, you can make good phones. Motorola has been making good phones for a long time, and they haven't ever made it back. What I think is funny is the uh, looking at it from maybe AT and T standpoint or from their perspective, right? They uh, they're not selling the device in store. So and, and coming from AT and T that tries to get an exclusive on every phone ever and sell it. Uh, to the masses that and they don't want to sell the HTC 10. I don't know exactly why that is. Maybe HTC was like, no, we don't want to bloat it or or whoever. But I have a hard time believing that HTC. Well, really you know Verizon cares. well and they're selling it. Yeah, exactly. So why HTC wouldn't want to push it through all the channels possible to sell as many as they could? Who knows? Um, so I, I, yeah. when they launched the one M7, the original one, remember Verizon didn't carry it. Hmm. Um, and I asked HTC at the time, I said, what is up with that? And they said, they, they basically said, it's not our choice. It was basically, they, they couldn't say Verizon told us no, but they basically said, you know, we obviously want to have it everywhere if possible, if something like that, which was basically, we wanted it on Verizon and Verizon didn't want it. So this, this is, I, this is not, I don't think HTC saying we're not coming to you. This is AT&T just flat out saying, well, I don't think we really care. Like that's, it's kind of sending a pretty big message to HTC. And it's unfortunate because if you are on AT&T and you want this phone, you have to go buy the unlocked version, which is $700. And so with at AT&T, you know, you could have used the next plan or whatever and made the payments work for, you know, whatever you're comfortable with. With Without that, I mean, you kind of got to go. I think there's they're doing a PayPal deal, which we've actually had some, some comments about. So through HTC's site, if you buy the phone unlocked, you can do this PayPal deal where it says like on the front page of HTC site for it, uh, 12 months, no interest, you know, as long as you pay it off. And everyone that's signed up for it has said that that's not actually the case. And they're actually only getting six months, no interest. So, mm. so I don't know what's going on there, but just be aware of that. If you go buy the unlocked version uh, with the PayPal, no interest thing. Uh, but yeah, at t not carrying. That's obviously a huge deal. I mean, at t and Verizon, if they're not carrying your phones, you're missing out on a whole bunch of people. I mean, there's a lot of people that just want to go buy from a carrier because they can tie it in with promos and plans and all this stuff and new lines, different, whatever. And when it's unlocked, as much as we love unlocked phones, we wish everyone would just buy unlocked phones. Uh, not everyone can. So that's a that's kind of a big hit. Yeah, yeah, and and then going on top of that, HTC and AT and T have been known to partner to release exclusive devices before. So AT and T doing this is sort of odd. If y'all will, y'all, if you all will remember, uh, a few years ago, HTC, Facebook, and AT and T uh, released the HTC Burst, which was a AKA the Facebook phone. It was a it was a blockbuster uh, device, widely popular among all the people. And uh, so now AT&T turning the cold shoulder to HTC is sort of odd. So it sucks for AT, uh, sucks for HTC. We'll see if it really matters. I don't think it will. I don't think this phone is going to be huge. I mean, I, I would want it to be like, I want HTC to be successful. I want everyone to be successful. But at the same time, I just don't think they, they brought enough to really kind of take down anyone in their way. You know what I mean? No competition. Yeah. Yeah, my guess is that HTC's future, assuming it continues in phones, and, and it may not, like they are fully invested in VR and Vive and all of that stuff. And I think they think that's the future for them could very well be. And, you know, in partnerships with Under Armour and things like that, um, I think they'll still make phones, but I think it's it's going to be kind of like Motorola. They're going to make really good phones. They just don't have the budgets to push them to everyone like Samsung and Apple do. And it's tough to compete on that really, really high volume space, but they'll still make good phones and they'll have their loyal fans. They, they clearly still have their loyal fans. We hear from them constantly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they'll still have their loyal fans and they'll sell phones and they'll, you know, try to make their money in other areas. But like, I, we're not going to read an article that says HTC sold 10 million of these in the next quarter. I just, I don't really think that's going to happen. They'll sell a few million probably. And then, you know, it'll start dying down and whatnot. But, uh, so I've had the thing since Tuesday. Um, I have, I think mostly good things to say about the phone. I think HTC did some things that, uh, 
that I think a lot of us as Android sort of enthusiasts can really appreciate. Uh, number one is just in the software, right? So they, it's got Sense 8 or whatever we're calling the newest version of Sense on it, but you almost can't really tell. Like there's some things you can tell like, like on the, uh, hold on, let me swipe some things away. Like on the lock screen, you know, you have those shortcuts to your, uh, to your, those apps, but you can't change those. Like those are whatever's in your dock kind of thing. So if you change out whatever's on the dock on your home screen, like that's what those, those are. And I think they used to do this, but then I thought they maybe did some things where you could customize them. Now it's like whatever the, your four apps in your dock are, those are what's on there. So there's some little sense tweaks, but for the most part, like when you pull down the, the quick shade or notification shade with quick tiles, like it looks like stock Android. And um, then the app drawer is a little bit different. Wow, I can't get that to swipe up anyways. Um, so I think why we'll all appreciate it is because it's like the cleanest skin ever. There's just no, no real customizations to it. And it almost makes for a boring phone. But I think, you know, like when you have a Nexus phone, you could argue that it's a boring experience too, right? There's no fluff. It's like, here's Android, do whatever you want with it. And that's kind of what HTC is going with. So if you're a Nexus guy or you hate TouchWiz and LG's terrible skins, like this is a pretty good option because the software is clean and light and HTC will update this phone. It's, well, assuming you have the unlocked version, HTC is going to update this phone all the time. They've been doing a fairly good job with the one a nine. So uh, this thing should continue on. And it just seems to be getting lighter and lighter in terms of software uh, in terms of hardware. So the design, like it looks like the one M seven is what it looks like to me. Uh, but then it's got the giant double chamfer thing going on. <laughs> uh, it's not, like th there's nothing new really going on with this design. Uh, if you like HTC's phone designs, you'll probably like this design. Uh, I'm sort of in the middle. I've always kind of liked their designs, haven't loved their designs. This is probably one of their better looking phones of the last couple of years. Like the one M9 was not a good looking phone at all. The one M8 I did think was good and was a nice refinement on the one M7. And then this sort of takes that another step. So uh, nice looking phone, you know, the, the uh, stereo speakers are gone in favor of this really, really weird woofer tweeter setup. <laughs> I don't know why your phone needs like a woofer and a tweeter, but so they've gone with that. I'm with you in the front fingerprint sensor. I'm not a huge fan of, and actually this, some, so some people have joked about how this is an iPhone and a galaxy clone. And like, if you look at these next to each other, I, I need to get that fingerprint reader in there. You can kind of see like, they do actually look quite a bit alike, <laughs> like the cameras in the same spot and all that. But, um, so overall, I think I like the phone. The battery life's been pretty good. The performance is fine. Um, the design's fine. The uh, the camera so far, we were talking about this a little bit off before the show. The camera's okay. I don't know that I'm in love with it. I know some other people have said, oh, it's such a great, great camera. Uh, and it's the Ultra Pixel 2. And we know it's the same camera that's in the 6P. Um, it's not as good as the Galaxy S7's camera. I'll tell you that right now. It's not as fast to focus. It's not as quick in, or good in low light. It's a solid camera. I just, so far, I haven't really been that impressed with it. Um, they also do this really weird thing where like, if you take a picture and tap on the screen to focus in an area, it locks the focus in that area and stays there for a while. So it's, it's kind of, it's kind of odd. Some of the things they've done. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's a good phone. It's kind of a boring phone. There's not a lot wrong with it. Um, they did a lot right. I'm with you and also wish they had water resistance or something. Uh, but I don't, like, I don't really have anything bad to say about it. I just, there's something missing. Like there's, there's not some really unique breakthrough feature they're introducing unless you're an audiophile and you really want, you know, the best sound experience. You'll probably get that with this phone. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think HTC did a really nice job it's easy to say that this is their best phone in years. I don't know that that's saying a lot because they haven't made a good phone in years. Um, but I don't think anyone's going to be disappointed with this phone. So I don't really know what else to say. Like I'm still working towards a review, right? Like Galaxy S7, I picked that up for the first time, blown away. Like I held that phone and went, this is going to be my next phone. Like you could just tell this phone. I'm like, yeah, it's a really good phone. I. I don't know that it's better than the Galaxy S7. It's better than the G5. <laughs> I don't know that that's saying that much, but uh, I don't know. We will obviously have a full review coming and uh, impressed so far for the most part with this phone. I'm just hoping like at some point something clicks, snaps and goes, oh yes, this is why this is an awesome phone. 
this is why it's better than the S7. And we may get that, we may not get that. I also wish I had the dark one. I was looking at what the dark one's actually called because it actually, doesn't actually make much sense. It is called carbon gray, the dark version. It's carbon gray. Yeah, carbon gray. And then this is glacier silver. And then there's a gold version somewhere. And there's a red version going to Japan or something, I think. The red one looks pretty cool. I will yeah. say. I'm sure it'll get, be like a Best Buy exclusive or something in like six months after everyone's already bought it who wanted it. It's possible. Yeah. Uh, what else? Oh, so I went to a an HTC sort of event to get this phone um, earlier in the week. And they had the JBL USB Type-C headphones there. And they were pretty sweet. Not going to lie. They sounded pretty great. Like I was standing in front of this. They had a DJ at this thing. And the DJ was playing and the speakers were set up like in front of this table with all the JBL headphones. And I put those in with the USB, turned on the noise cancellation and really couldn't hear the dude. And he was standing, he was like right in front of me. So the noise cancellation seemed to work pretty good. And they're in ear buds. They're not over ear or anything. Uh, and they sounded pretty good. So I'm excited for USB type C headphones, especially because this phone has headphone jack on the top. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I think that's pretty much it in terms of just my early thoughts on this phone. I think it's a really good phone. Oh, and also, this isn't really a teaser, but I have a massive comparison video of this to S7 and G5 on the way that I'll hopefully have up today. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, I have nothing but good things to say about this phone for the most part. I just, we're at this stage where we compare things, right? Is it better than the Galaxy S7? Is it better than the G5? Are those better than it? And right now, I just still think the S7 is the phone to beat. Uh, but I think this is a really good, really good phone from HTC. All right. So let's see. We asked, we asked our readers if they were buying this bad boy. Actually, the, was it the day before they announced this? We asked, why does everyone hate HTC? I can't remember what the question was. We said, why, why, do why you don't care? you care anymore? And uh, that post has over, I looked today, it has over 500 comments of people uh, there's some defending HTC and it was, it was weird actually. So the HTC elevate kids, which are their like fan club, which are really obnoxious, obsessed HTC people. Uh, they didn't like our question and they looked at it as us as taking a jab at HTC, but that was really wasn't what we were doing at all. We were just asking because our readers give us feedback all the time. And every post we wrote about the HTC 10, they all basically just crapped all over it and said it was a failure and HTC's dead. It wasn't like we just made up this thing. So anyways, it's 500 comments of people saying why they don't really care about HTC. And so then when it was announced, we did ask then if anyone was buying it and 76% said no. So I guess that, that shows you right there. Um, well, at least from our readers, how many, how many total votes were there? 6,000 votes. That's a, it's a pretty good, I mean, that's um, a good chunk. That's a good chunk. <clears throat> you know, a lot of people still love their Nexus 6P, and rightfully so. That's true. And a lot of our readers are big Nexus people. And then the rest are becoming um, Samsung people, which is funny because at one time, everyone thought we were massive Samsung haters. <laughs> uh, so yeah, HTC, HTC 10, really nice phone. Clearly, not everyone is as excited as the uh, HTC's favorite media outlets are. Um, okay. So you had an interesting opinion though. There's rumors of this being HTC making Nexus phone. Right. So what were your thoughts there? Well, my thoughts earlier, you know, before the phone was official, I was like, crap, you know, it, it, if it's true, if Google has tapped HTC to make one, uh, but not only one, maybe even two Nexus devices, maybe like a bigger one and a smaller one. And then I was, I was sort of upset about it. I was like, damn, you know, the, the last HTC Nexus device really sucked. And that was the yeah. Nexus 9. And and I, and then I, saw, I tried, to, you know, making the point to myself, well, now maybe it's not HTC's fault entirely. Android in general on tablets is pretty rubbish. And not only that, there was also a Tegra processor inside of that uh, tablet. <laughs> That's right. I always forget that. Yeah, and Tegra processors, for some odd reason... Um, they just do not stand the test of time, you know, over six months to a year. It, it just really becomes sort of like a, like a kind of a mess, uh, at least in terms of performance and stuff. So 
moving past all that, I was thinking, you know, maybe if a few things changed on the HTC 10, for example, fingerprint reader being moved to the backside, like it is on the 5X and the Nexus 6P, that's where I personally like it. We did a poll recently. A lot of people agree with me. Some don't. Some very passionately. Yeah, what were the results on that? I forgot about that. I'll look it up. All right, I don't have anyway. the figures on right now. But um, so a lot of people agree. Fingerprint readers should be on the back because when you pick it up, it's perfect for your index finger. When it's coming out of your pocket, your finger's already in that magical little spot. Sure, if it's sitting on the table and uh, it's on the backside, you know, big whoop, then you should have some type of... Uh, the the uh lo the proximity thing going to where you it's not even locked like if you're at home or at the office then your yeah. phone doesn't even need to be locked so 60 percent, by the way said backside so there we go i am finally part of a majority we actually had 10 percent say on the side though which is that's an interesting spot it doesn't get enough love i don't think because Stony when you pick know. your phone up right you hold it like this like your thumb is right there it's yeah. actually a pretty good spot makes sense but I actually, I, I like that placement on the Robin. It's just the Robin is super plasticky and cheap feeling. So it, it's kind of hard to like really get it. I always feel like I'm going to break the power button. Like no joke. It's, it's super janky. Anyway, yeah, moving on. So not only that, you have to move, get rid of the home button, get rid of the capacitive buttons, fingerprint reader on the backside, put on screen buttons back like your, you know, like a normal Nexus device would be. I don't like using the word normal, but like a standard Nexus device. Bring the stereo speakers back because if you wipe right. out that area, you put a speaker back there. Exactly. And I don't care if it's a, a woofer, tweeter. Uh, I don't care. As long as there's two front, fa uh, two front facing speakers, I'll be happy. And then also kind of let's put some type of coating, like a soft touch coating over the metal. Like I know metal is cool and it's great on the 6P and all that, but I really enjoyed the coating that was on the 5X on the black one in particular, um, that super soft touch, kind of, uh, pretty much the same that was on the, the Nexus 9. Um, very soft touch, although I will say the Nexus 9 was much more of a fingerprint magnet than the mm -hmm. Nexus 5 was. So if we can go soft touch over that metal to give it that premium feel in hand where it doesn't feel very plasticky, it, it's, it's solid, it's kind of weighty to it, um, that could be a pretty darn good Nexus device coming with Android N and all that. I think it'd be sweet. You get those top tier specs in there, allow Google to maybe work on the camera software a little bit to help optimize the performance and uh, do some tweaks in there. Cause as Kellen said, you know, it's not the greatest, um, but it's definitely, it's on the right track. So the, if the new Nexus device for 2016 is inspired off the HTC 10, uh, you know, loosely inspired, it's always somewhat different, right? Um, then I could see it being pretty sweet. So that, that was my take on it. A lot of people agreed with me. Um, some didn't. Some just said, to hell with HTC. And, <laughs> right. Yeah, and bless their hearts. You know, they're passionate, and passionate about whatever they're passionate about. Um, but uh, the funny yeah. thing is, if, HTC, if, if Google makes or asks HTC to make one, uh, the next Nexus, and it like, looks like this, next year, everyone will love HTC. No, nothing against mm -hmm. Huawei. But Android elitists right now love them some Huawei because they love the 6P. And so if we get a Nexus that's like this and around this size, oh, God, all these HTC haters are going to forget that they ever said anything bad about HTC. Yeah, if there was one OEM that didn't fare too well from making Nexus phones, I think it would be Samsung because they the Nexus S was okay. It wasn't like the greatest experience of all time. It was cool. It had gingerbread. But um, Galaxy the, Nexus was a disaster. Yeah, the Galaxy Nexus was a disaster, at least for our readers, because our readers um, disproportionately are Verizon users, or at least one time were. What's and the point? Galaxy Nexus and Verizon just were, was not meshing very well. <laughs> so, um, so Samsung didn't fare too well uh, from making Nexus phones. But in the long term, like Huawei is getting so much good publicity. At first, we wanted to take them to court because they were Chinese spies. Now we are in, now we are embracing Huawei and our Everybody Chinese overlords. Everybody loves Huawei now, yeah. Absolutely, bring it on. So <laughs> this this shows really how I don't want to say shallow the Android community is or anything like that, but your mind can be you can be persuaded into liking a certain company just right. if you know it runs stock Android and Google backs right. and stuff. I mean, it's sort of right. it's sort of ridiculous.
but yeah I, I am all for it. I mean, if if Google takes, you know, like you said, they don't exactly like copy this design. Google sort of likes to come up with their own stuff. But if there's a Nexus that's kind of like this, I'm all for it. I think it'd be sweet. Like Google get in there, play with it, tweak some things. Like you said, put that fingerprint reader right there where my finger is. Put a speaker there. Put a speaker mm -hmm. there on the front again. Give me that stereo. I'm I'm cool with that. That could be it's, like, it's a nicely built phone. So if you if you compare this to the G5, um, just the, you know, they're both metal phones. You wouldn't be able to tell if, if like, if I'd hand you the G5 in this and I was like, which one feels like metal? You would say the G5 does not feel like metal. Hmm. And it just doesn't have the same, like it's not put together quite as nicely as the HTC. And so this is a well-built phone, high-end phone right here. Yeah, I'm down with that, Nexus. HTC Nexus, it's probably about time, right? They kind of, you know, they did the first Nexus phone and then they came back and did the Nexus 9. But the Nexus 9, we all thought was going to be this premium metal HTC style tablet. And it was just a creaky, cheap plastic thing that was running a terrible processor that's never run well. Yeah, it wasn't all that good. And then, I mean, heck, the, the last Nexus phone that HTC made was indeed the first one. Uh, ever released to the public. Um, so I think it's HTC's turn. Uh, I mean, heck, we even let Huawei build one before HTC got a second chance. So give it to, come on, coach, put HTC in the game, get him off the bench, and, and see if he can at least hit average. And let's not let LG make one for a while. Nothing against LG, but they've made, what, three now? They made four, five, and now 5X. It's wow. time for somebody else. Yeah, I, I would have I, to agree. I think it's time for HTC to make another phone. And because everyone loves Huawei, they can make another one. I don't really care. I'm, I'm cool. I like the two approach where you have choice in Nexus phones. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we need some fresh. We need HTC to come back. I, I think I think Motorola needs like a do-over as well because that Shamu thing was... Whew. Yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty rough for people who don't like um, Mammoths in their pocket. Yeah. So someone just recently commented, shout out to Joe, Joe J., he said, uh, oh, wait, you know what? I'm actually giving... Oh, yes, wait, no. Where is it? Yes, Joe J, thank you. He says, poor LG, they are the current HTC now. And I sort of kind of get that feeling, too, that the G5 definitely didn't make a splash like it maybe should have with its modular design. And, and plus, now we're finding out that the... Uh, what was it? The high deck audio isn't even coming. Uh, not to the U.S., yeah. Not to the U.S. I mean, these are the type of... Um, things that need to happen in order for the U.S. consumers to feel like you're actually, you know, trying um, to succeed, I guess. But so, yeah, I can see actually LG taking a back seat now to both Samsung and HTC in this year. And that's rough, um, at least from LG's perspective, I, I would say. Um, I think in terms of just fanboys liking Android, that may be true. But LG will sell a bajillion more phones than HTC yes. ever thought of. Yeah, sure. LG might sell more potentially, but I guess, yeah, from the eyes of the Android community as a whole, I, I would say that LG didn't really bring it with the G5. I saw a picture recently of the build quality of the G5 and how that modular, the slipping doesn't even come close to matching up with the, um, with the actual body itself on the siding. And uh, I was like, oh, man, look how terrible that is. So, so I've, I've seen people say that. So I've, I have three of these in the office right now. And <laughs> I, have, I have not had one issue. That's good. There's, like I saw somebody, I think it was Ron at Ars Technica was talking about like he could basically see through the housing or something. And I don't know what the yeah. hell he's talking about. I, like this phone has the only tiny little issue is sort of at the bottom and you're not gonna be able to see this in here but like it maybe is off just a touch but mm -hmm. I, I have no issues with the build on this phone it's just kind of ugly and feels like plastic that's all right so on yours it might be good but that that same part down near the corner where it connects the two um that's where some people might be mm -hmm. having an issue uh with it lining up and i guess if you got ocd you're in for uh, some real trouble but yeah if you have ocd don't buy that phone yeah <laughs> But again, I mean, just to get back to the point, I don't think LG did enough to make them stand apart, even with the modular stuff. Like, all yeah. the all the module is good for is replacing the battery. Big freaking whoop, you know?
but they screwed that up because it turns the phone off when you do that. Like they needed to include like an internal mic, like mini battery. Yeah, so like, like you could have like 30 seconds to swap and <laughs> not kill it or something. Right. Or like a minute. Yeah. Um, well, so speaking of that, so my review is out. So LG G5 review is out. If you want to go read that, uh, I think, I mean, we've kind of talked about this a little bit already, but decent phone, not great phone. So doesn't really stand up that well to the Galaxy S7, at least in my opinion. Galaxy S7 is just uh, an amazing phone. And this one is, it's a good phone, but nowhere near being great. Uh, The HTC 10, I've only had it for a few days. I would probably choose that over this phone as well. And that's just within a few days of using it. Um, So, you know, what's good with the G5, obviously it has really nice specs and the performance on this phone is pretty crazy. It's, it was kind of like the V10. I remember it surprised me a little bit. It's just one of those like flip around. It's really smooth and you're in and out of apps and all that performance on this phone is actually really, really good. Even though it runs LG skin, they've actually fine tuned it um, pretty well. Uh, as for the removable battery, I, I've never really cared much about removable batteries. I remember back in, I think it was the speaking of the galaxy Nexus when that came out and the battery life was about four hours <laughs> and I remember it was a big deal. Swapping batteries was a nice thing. Um, but in recent years, I just haven't cared because batteries will last you 12 to 14 hours or whatever. But I will say that with this phone and during my review period, I think I plugged it into a charger like twice because I had a spare battery. So all I would do is charge up a battery. And then when this thing died, I just swapped the battery out have a fresh one, put the old battery in a charger and let that do work while I had a phone with a fresh battery. So it is kind of handy. I don't know that I would go out and buy a phone just because it had a removable battery, but if it does, that's kind of like an extra bonus. Um, As for the cameras, it's got two, right? And yes, we know that area is quite ugly. Um, The 16 megapixel shooter takes pretty good photos. I was actually, initially I wasn't that impressed with them. Uh, but when, then when I started comparing them to some similar shots I had taken on the S7, I would say the 16 megapixel shooters up there in at least in daylight and stuff quality wise with the S7. Uh, and then the wide angle shooter is eight megapixels, which we kind of consider low now. And you, you know, you can't do much editing with an eight megapixel shot, which is fine. None of us are doing that much editing. Right. Uh, but it takes cool photos like 135 degree wide angle is something no one else does. And I don't know that I need it in every phone, but it's one of those things like the battery. If you have it, it's actually pretty cool. You can really take some cool angled shots. And in the review, I did this thing where I stood in the same spot and just flipped between the cameras and took a picture of the same thing. And you can really capture a lot of stuff with it, which is pretty fun. Um, Let's see. What didn't I really like though? So the display on this phone is, it's not really good. Um, It's an LCD panel. Uh, like I said, I, I've had three devices in house off and on, and they're just like the brightness, especially outdoors is really bad. Like I didn't realize how bad it was until I had the S seven with me and I was doing sort of a photo comparison and I was just snapping photos on the S seven and I could see what I was taking a picture of and all this stuff. And I, I didn't realize it at first, but on the G five, I was squinting and like adjusting where I was because I couldn't see the display maxed out brightness. I had no idea what I was taking pictures of sometimes while the Galaxy S7 was showing me perfectly in frame what was going on. And then there's also this sort of weird greenish tint to it that just drives me nuts. So the display is just not really, not really that good. Um, And then the other thing, and this isn't necessarily something I don't like, but you just sort of touched on this, the modular thing, really cool concept. And I, I, I talked about this a little bit in the review, but next year, G6, we may get like 15 different modules and maybe they'll have some sort of way to keep the phone from not turning off when you pop the thing out and all this stuff. And there's this future, I think, in modular phones. And this is more of just a proof of concept kind of thing where they're like, look, we're the first company to create a phone that's technically modular and you can attach a camera grip and an audio DAC, right? Uh, unfortunately there's not really a big market. I don't think for a camera grip and, uh, and then the DAC, there is a little bit, right? There's audio files around, but, uh, LG doesn't think there's enough in the U S so they're not even going to sell it in the U S so you're limited, right? So you could buy this phone and say like, yeah, I have a modular phone. It's going to be able to do some really cool things, but we don't actually know that at this point, right? Like the life cycles of phones are really short. Uh, and so LG is actually hosting, I think today, 
a uh, sort of, they're calling it a developer conference for this phone and they're gonna talk about modules and things. But by the time they get companies together with ideas to build modules, like the G6 is gonna be here. So uh, you can't really buy this phone and talk about it being modular because the only thing you can do is put on a camera grip in the US and that's not really a big deal, I don't think. Uh, so the modular thing, they introduced it it probably won't be a deal until next year. So if, don't buy this phone because it's modular, because it's probably never gonna really get many modules. Wait for the G6 if you want modular stuff. So uh, just overall, this phone, it's look, it's a nice phone. If you buy this phone, I'm sure you're gonna be happy with it. The battery life's fine, the performance is great. Um, it has USB type C on the bottom. It's just not better than the S7. And I also don't think it's better than the HTC 10. So if you are looking at a comparison between all three of those, I think you have two phones that are a better choice than this. That's pretty much all I have to say about the G5. I just don't, it's not like my favorite phone, unfortunately. LG has never really put out like a mind blowing device that, um, that really sort of stood the test of time. Um, it's always been so uh, like the, the G3 and G4, at least in my mind, are, are pretty very similar. Um, design changed a little bit. There was a little bit of curve, which I, I actually liked. G5, it just looks boring. The, I mean, the whole thing just seemed sort of sort of boring. So they tried a bunch of stuff, right? They were like, let's go metal for the first time. Let's go modular. Let's go dual camera. Like they tried a bunch of stuff and I just don't know that they really nailed any of it. Yeah. They did some of it okay. But. Right. People are bringing up the G2. I will say that the LG G2 from many moons ago was actually quite cool. It was the first device they, they made. I'm pretty sure that had that rear facing volume rocker and stuff. I actually liked that. Um, so if they would have put the G5 out that maybe had that, uh, the, volume rocker on the back with the um, fingerprint reader and power button and kind of kept to that design, I would have been like, okay, sweet. But now they're, they're changing it again. And, um, and someone was asking if um, we can expect the modular stuff to come to the, the V series. And then I, it had me thinking of what they would call that next phone because V10, it makes sense because there are such thing as V10 engines. <laughs> right. Yeah, where are they gonna go, V12? Hey. Yeah, you would think they the you'd have to go to V12 because V11s aren't necessarily a thing. So it would be odd, but it, then it would be odd for them to skip 11. Like, what happened to 11? So, seems odd. Uh, I don't think that the V series will adopt the modular stuff. Maybe they'll keep that for the G line. It, it's so it's hard too. to say. A lot of people like the V10, though. It oh, actually yeah, kinda, we've got a lot of V10 fans. And that surprises me. Like... I like more, the V10, which is yeah. really weird, but I kind of do. It's like yeah. its own weird phone, but in a cool way. I don't know how to explain that thing. It's so big, though. It's it, way too big. It's so tall, and it's like the plastic with the metal, and then more plastic all yeah. over the place. If they made a small V10, though, it could, could be, be pretty cool. sweet, yeah, but they yeah. don't. Yeah, I don't know. So, V11 coming out this year, we think. <laughs> What a weird naming thing. Yeah, what a weird way to start. They could have gone V8. V8 V6. Made some sense. Gone 6, 8, 10, 12. They had at least four years. Now, yeah, where the hell are they going to V12 and that's it? Or just retire it? I guess. All right. Not to, I don't want to rag on, on LG too much, but this, this is something that really, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to show this, but right at the top. Oh, yeah, you can kind of see it. So at the, at the top here, there's this subtle curve. Oh, yeah. So, it's supposed to match, I think, the bottom, because the bottom down here has this like little curve to it, right? So right here, it also does it with the display, but it's part of the glass. And if you look at it in the right light, it looks like, I wish I could get this on here. I almost need to make a video about this because it drives me so nuts. There's like, it looks like the glass, it's, it's not supposed to be curved is what it looks like. It looks like there's almost a crease, like it's stressed. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be shocked in like a year if there's this like, massive thread somewhere about the glass breaking because of that. It is the worst thing I have ever seen. Right. I mean, it, it seriously looks stressed. Like it could crack at any time. It almost looks like there's just a crease. Like they folded it. <laughs> I don't know. That's not good. There's some weird things with this phone. That would be one of them that drives me insane. Not a design highlight. That's for sure. Anyways. So yeah, LG G5 again, solid phone just not great and in 2016 we're kind of expecting great from everyone 
Yeah. All right. So uh, let's move out of there. So this week, Android and developer preview two was released. Uh, not a huge, huge, huge update with a whole bunch of new stuff, but a big enough update with definitely some new stuff. So there are factory images already out and OTA.zip files that you can download already out. <clears throat> so we got, uh, basically they fully released the Vulkan API for gaming. Uh, they introduced something called launcher shortcuts, which may be an Apple-ish 3D touch thing, maybe not. It's sort of tough to say because Google announced it but didn't really talk that much about it, and so we don't really know. Um, they're updating emoji that are so they're more people-like now than ever, skin tones, all that fun stuff. Uh, they upgraded multi-window a little bit. Uh, there's some other API changes. That's kind of it. Uh, we also dove in to find other little tiny changes here and there and like folder icons. They changed folder icons and apparently it's a really big deal. I don't get it. Why are folder icons such a big deal? Well, I don't think it's a big deal. I think it's it's just different, right? And it actually looks cool. Like I immediately downloaded the Nova beta, the Nova Nova launcher beta and updated with the new folders and and they're cool. Like that was like the first thing my girlfriend noticed too. She was like, "Oh, are those new folder icons or whatever?" I was like, "Oh my god, yes, they are." You're a fan. (laughs) You're saying you're a fan of the new folder icons. Yeah, I think I am too. I think they look better than the old crappy version. I mean, the old icons are not pretty. These are actually kind of icons that don't look bad. Yeah, there's a lot of people that hate these things, dude. Are we talking about the play icons? No. Which icons are you the, talking the about? The folder icons. Oh, the folder, the actual look of the folder? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I, I like it. Too. The new circle right. with kind of yes. the white background and they cut the corners off of the icons that are inside them. Mm-hmm. I like them too. A lot of people hate them. I mean, mm. there's like rage on the internet about what? these folder icons. Yeah. I haven't seen any rage. I've seen people saying, who gives a shit about folder looking well, like that. That's kind of what I, that's where I lean. <laughs> yeah. Those are people that aren't happy about this. Anyway, no. I think they look fine too. Uh, we got a clear all button in the oh. app switcher, yes. which is actually kind of welcomed. I mean, oh, seriously? Yeah. yeah instead of on a Nexus phone, I would have to swipe, 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 swipe. But now clear all, that's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, there, there's a calculator, t- quick tile shortcut, which. Nice. Uh, I, I get it because there's times when you just need a calculator on the fly. You're at a restaurant doing some tip calculations, whatever. But Google specifically said these shortcuts should not be used not to be launch apps. an app. And yeah. what do they do? They create a shortcut <laughs> that launches an app. Yeah, it, it actually seems really stupid because in the time that I could pull down the tr- uh, pull down the drawer, open up the app, I could just open up the app drawer and open up the app. Well, the I only don't... thing is if you have it secured, like a secure lock screen, you can pull it down and tap it. And it'll actually open on top of your lock screen, sort of. Not like a floating thing, but it'll open. So you can do it without ever unlocking, but yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I guess if you want to save five seconds. Yeah, I guess maybe technically it's a tool and maybe tools like that could be used as shortcuts. But still, they're launching the calculator app, which goes against what they told me. <laughs> to uh, the new emoji are whatever they are. Um, we got a new camera app, but whatever. <laughs> it's like not that different. It just looks a little bit different skinned. Although you can take pictures again while recording video, which is something. Let's see. They tweak some of the home screen layout when you're moving icons and widgets around. You can set home and lock screen for wallpapers though now. Yeah, some of these good. are like Google Now Launcher, Google App Updates that everyone will get, but they're in the new end preview. That's one of those things I feel like should have been there a long time ago too. Like sometimes you want different, you want different wallpapers. Totally agree. It's funny. A lot of the comments were, okay, so Google's now just stealing everything from all the customer or custom skins or third party skins that we've all bitched about. And yeah, they kind of are, but they've been doing that for a long time. Yeah. So get out of here guys. Come on. Yeah. So that's mostly it. There's again, it's Android developer preview two. It's not supposed to be a huge change. We got all the new stuff in preview one. This is just now a refinement or Google playing with things. Cause they've got a, we've got a few more of these builds coming, right? Like at least three more previews. How many do we got? Is it five total? Okay. Something like that. Something like that. Quite a few. I actually, you know, I dig it. There are certain things that I don't necessarily care for, like the layout um, inside of the settings menu at the top there. There's these options for like adding Gmail accounts or something like that. I mean, and it's all very personalized to how you use the phone. I don't really care about any of that. But um, I also want new wallpapers. 
I like Google's wallpapers. They always I tend to put out some pretty darn good wallpapers. So um, the sooner that they add new wallpapers into the Android and developer previews, I will be happy. And so, nice. I, like the pink one is cool. It's just sort of boring. It's just like pink, right? Um, and there's like a blend, a gradient of purple and pink. And yeah, hopefully when they release a new Nexus phone, it has like 10 new wallpapers, not just one. Right, that would be good. And that bring back nice. live wallpapers. Well, they're uh, dead, so dead. Actually, yeah. they're not dead because the next thing we're going to talk about, which is those Nexus Live cases, they oh, come right. with a live wallpaper. Right. So they're they're alive and well, just yeah. not as you know janky as they used to be. It would be kind of nice to get a, a Google to rethink the live wallpaper some way yeah. and give us something really cool. Because how many years has it been? We haven't had a new one in like six years, I feel like. Well, the last ones shipped on the Google Play editions. Um, it was the Sunbeam one. I'm which sorry. I'm pretty sure is the last like official live wallpaper from Google. Well, it wasn't Sunbeam, just another take on that bluish. On phase Beam. Yeah. yeah. And I loved Phase Beam. <laughs> so, and that one launched, I think, with the Nexus S. And I loved it. Actually, yeah, maybe. It's so, about the only one that stuck around, too. I, I mean, I think they're yeah. gone now from the end preview. I don't even know if they're on Marshmallow, but it was one that like hung on for years. Yeah, live wallpapers in general were, were um, taken out. So I think it would be cool to bring it back. Like I would love, like th looking back on the the first uh, Google Nexus uh, with that color with the Nexus scheme, and you could tap on it and stuff, and that was cool. Bring so it back. Awesome. But whenever I download a third party app and put that on my phone, it turns the phone into rubbish. Like the performance goes downhill and stuff. I'm like, man, I want this experience back, but I don't want my phone to perform like back it did in 2011. Right. So I need uh, optimized live wallpapers would be. I just remember nice. when they had the water live wallpaper and you could tap and it would ripple and it's just mind blown. You could ripple it. And that then was Sam pretty awesome. And then Samsung brought water noises and the world was over. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. They ruined it. They, they took a good thing me. and they ruined it. Yeah. We wanted water on our phones and then Samsung was like, oh yeah, water noises. <laughs> so annoying. It was pretty bad. All right. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so yeah, Nexus Live Cases are something we want to talk about quickly. So uh, this week, Google announced Live Cases for the 6P, 5X, and 6. And they're actually pretty cool. So you can create custom cases. They're essentially like a TPU thin case that attaches to your phone. So that's not really that groundbreaking. But they have tools on there uh, in the Google Store where you can create one based off of a map. And so you can choose anywhere in the world and create a map and you line it up how you want to on your phone and then say, make a case out of this. And then you can change colors and not really the texture, but just the, the way the map sort of appears on the case. And then they'll make it in like, I think it's four to six days. I ordered one and I think it said it would take four to six days of free shipping. They are 35 bucks, so they're not cheap, but it is a custom case that no one else will have, which is kind of cool. And then it has a button in it so it's kind of like that Skrillex case, which had a button that you could customize. So it has a button you can customize that you could have like, launch a camera or pull up nearby places or something like that. But it has a little button shortcut in it as well. And then they're also doing one where you can custom upload your own picture and then you can tweak that with designs and colors as well and sort of have a custom picture case also 35 bucks. Yeah, it's kind of a cool experience for 35 bucks. I mean, like a personalized case and all that. It seems kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're a lot, I saw a lot of people, you know, kind of bitching about the price and how they can go buy a Spigen case on Amazon for six bucks. But Well, then do it. God, right. instead this of complaining, a, just go do it. Case. Like you're ordering it <laughs> and Google has to like actually print it on a case. One case. Yeah, you know. <laughs> these are all, yeah, these are all one-offs. This isn't. They're going to make a whole run of your case. It's a one-off that, that costs money. It's like Nike's ID, right? The right. shoes are typically like 40, 50 bucks sometimes over what the, the normal stock model are because they're making a one-off. So look, if you don't want your own personal case, you don't have to buy one. <laughs> no, you don't. I mean, did everyone think these were going to be 10 bucks? Like they also <laughs> embedded a NFC button in the thing. Like they're giving you quite a bit for 35 bucks. Why won't Google take a loss on everything they sell? Damn them. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a case guy, but these are pretty sweet cases. 
I am not a case guy whatsoever, but if I knew someone who used a case on their phone and I was like, hmm, what would be like a cool Christmas present or a oh, birthday Christmas present? present yeah. This would be totally awesome. Mm -hmm. So for 35 bucks, it's not a bad deal. Anyone who thinks it's a rip off, you need to get a re reality check. Reality check people. So yeah, <laughs> anyway, those are, those came out. Those are now available. So if you, you know, think 35 bucks is worth spending on a case, you should go look. If, if anything, just go play with the tool. It's actually kind of cool. The tool is cool. Yeah. All right. So uh, Motorola is in a little bit of hot water with oh. uh, Motorola phone owners this week. So yesterday on Reddit, some dude started a Reddit thread and basically said Motorola's replacement phone and warranty service is garbage at the moment. And it actually not at the moment. This has been going on for a while. Uh, and they basically said, like, look, people are without phones for months right now because they don't have replacement devices. And so then on that Reddit thread, which has thousands and thousands of upvotes at this point, uh, we started looking around just in complaint forums and on Motorola's own forums, and all this stuff. And it's pretty obvious that Motorola has an issue right now. And uh, it's pretty bad. I mean, we've had a couple of people email us about it over the last few months. And since we posted this thing, a number of other people have weighed in. Like, here's like the first comment on our post says, I went several months once waiting on a replacement. <laughs> Seems like, legit. We're talking month. Like you, your phone is under warranty and you have to wait months to get a new one that worked. Like you bought a phone and it was defective, which means you can warranty claim it. So it's not your fault. And you have to wait months to get a new one. That is completely unacceptable. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we've had some people tell us they're emailing any Motorola executive they can find an email for. I don't even know if there are any Motorola executives left. I think there's just Lenovo people. Uh, but they're emailing them, and those people are sort of taking care of things. Uh, yeah, it's bad. It's bad. I mean, if you just go through our comments, it's all these people sharing stories on how bad it is. Like this guy says, ordered a Moto X Peer and it arrived not working properly arranged to send it back and did not hear. <laughs> so he just didn't hear back. Called to follow up. They had no phones to replace the defective one. Hmm. You know, I've only had one real issue. We ordered a phone off Moto Maker. It yeah. was the uh, my Moto X Peer that has leather. And he came with a shoddy volume rocker. And, you know, we, we told Motorola... Uh, just their customer service people, and they sent us a code to use on Moto Maker. We just sent the the janky one in. We got the new phone. It worked fine. And so, luckily, we haven't had much of a problem. But right. I could see how this is someone's reality, and that scares me. Being a consumer, I was like, dude, I, I mean, you pay so much for these things, and then for companies to sort of not even, not that they don't care, but sort of like take that extra step to assure the customer that don't worry i got you i got you like i'm going to call to you and make sure you're safe and you gave me your money so i'm going to make sure that you get what uh, you paid for there's a there's a disconnect sometimes between companies and consumers and i wish there was a way to better bridge that gap but unfortunately whenever you hit up these service reps and um, my time it some of the issue is like maybe there's a language barrier sometimes and then you get frustrated because you can't explain the problem as, as clearly as you want to. And it just becomes extremely frustrating. So one day, maybe all of the world's problems will be solved. But uh, It's tough when you just don't, you can't do any of this in person, right? You're on a phone. You don't know who you're talking to, where it's going, what's going. Yeah, exactly. And that is one thing that I will say about Apple, you know, the, um, uh, the investment they make in allowing anybody anywhere in this country or maybe even across the globe in, in some parts where there is an Apple store uh, is to go into an Apple store and actually talk to an Apple person who speaks your language um, and can totally sympathize with your problem and attempt to resolve any issues. And I wish, I wish that say Samsung had a, a store like that. And I'm not talking about going into Best Buy and talking in the, into the trained uh, Best Buy employees who are faux Samsung representatives, I think, I think uh, it'd be awesome to get more of like that one-on-one -on -one experience because I'm all about that. And you get Samsung what you pay Samsung's for. Samsung's not the right? only one that can do it though, right? I mean, other than Absolutely, Apple, of course. 
Like yeah, I mean, Motorola can't have stores everywhere. Definitely not. They have one pop-up shop in Chicago, which is cool for Chicagoans. And yeah. um, and there's probably no support there. It's just a sales shop. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, most likely. I don't think you can yeah. go in there to the Genius Bar or anything like that. You know, and Samsung's actually making a pretty good effort with their latest uh, Samsung Plus app or whatever, where you can FaceTime um, right. with some video chat or live chat, and the the person on the the support team can actually take control of your phone and do stuff. I mean. That's cool. So it's definitely a step in the right direction. But when it comes to returning phones, oh man. And then like Google, for example, if you want to return a 6P, they want to charge you for a second phone. Motorola that, does the same thing, yeah. Right, they put that money on hold. I'm sorry, I'm not made of money. <laughs> right. like, like I just, my phone's broken, but you're gonna charge me more money for it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not a good thing. That's not a, that's not a, that's not a good fix. For Some of these phone. Motorola people said they got charged like two and three times. And they eventually just had to go to uh, their credit card company and say, I'm disputing all of these because yeah. that's how bad it, I mean, you should, you should come look through these comments. It is rough. There's, Not a lot of, there's, there's been a couple that are like, oh, everything's been fine. I've done this a couple of times, but most of these are just, whew. some of these stories are long too. Like people are oh, typing yeah. out their life story and it makes me feel really bad yeah. that, they, that they have to go through this. First of all, I feel fortunate that I've never really had any problems with any phones that I've received. Yeah, you know, like, I mean, am, yeah. I, am I just lucky or something? Um, apparently, it I seems am. seems like it because there's a <laughs> lot of people that I've had to j just with Motorola. Right. And, you know, these are consumer electronics. There's always bound to be problems with them. Yeah. You would think uh, you would think they'd fix this type of stuff. Apparently not, though. We have, what, what is this, uh, 100 people. We have over 100 comments here. A lot of them actually telling a horror story of their own. Yeah. So I mean, Motorola, I sent my Motorola 360 second gen, which is a, still a pretty new watch. Mm -hmm. About two months later, heard nothing from them. And he said, then a couple of weeks ago, they finally said, we have it. And that's it. He has no idea when he's getting a new one, what's going on. This is a second gen. And the other thing is the, this is Moto X peer editions. And like, these are their two, new, two newest products, which when you have a new product, lots of people buy it and you're obviously going to have some returns and faulty units and they just don't have replacements. And they don't know when they're going to be able to get them to people. It's bad. Yeah. I mean, if you just scroll through this and read some of these, you're just like, oh my God. So, you know, and look, we looked into on some of the complaint boards and stuff. I looked at Samsung and HTC and LG, and it's just not like this. Like when you go on complaint boards, that's what they're for, right? It's people complaining. But this is when you go through Motorola's stuff, it's Moto X Pure horror story, Moto X second gen horror story, Moto 360 horror story. And with Samsung and HTC and stuff, it's like all their crappy low end phones that people have had for two years and they're now <laughs> complaining about it. With Motorola, it's like their new stuff right now and Motorola can't do anything about it. I mean, I don't know how they fix that. They obviously need to go in. And that's partly why we write stories like this here and there um, is to sort of hopefully help these companies gain some more awareness of this. Because I don't know if there's a denial or what, but I mean, you go to their Reddit thread and there's hundreds of people talking about this. And now we have hundreds on our comment thread. And so, you know, hopefully it helps raise some awareness so these companies can maybe start making some changes because it's bad. That's bad customer service. Yep. Bad companies. Yeah. U.S. corporations are, they need to step up their game. Well, none of these are U.S. corporations. No, so not know anymore. About. All you corporations are going to pay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. So switching gears a little bit, Huawei announced a new phone the other day. It's called the P9. It's their new flagship, which will never come to the U.S. No. But it's interesting in the fact that it has a dual camera setup, which are both Leica certified. Leica, big German camera brand. Uh, it's not like they created special cameras for this. They just like certified it probably had some input on, you know, optimizing it or something like that. They're not actually like uh, cameras or lenses or anything like that. They just put their branding on it basically. But, uh, have that stupid. <laughs> the phone looks pretty sweet. And, uh, we reached out to Huawei and asked if they would send us one, but we're kind of a U.S. only site and this phone's not a U.S. phone. So they probably won't send us one, which is fine. Uh, they'll have a phone coming out later this year, probably maybe under the honor brand, which will probably be pretty good. So we'll, we'll get to it then, but I like what Huawei is doing. They're making nice stuff. They're trying to push. They're trying to become the next big thing. They're trying to take on Samsung and Apple. Yeah, totally. Uh, more power to them. Although dual rear, <laughs> dual rear facing cameras, um, not something I'm necessarily interested in. Wasn't interested in it in 
years ago. Not interested in it now. I don't get it. Um, like I understand what you're trying to do. I just don't see it as being like a selling point because it doesn't work. You know, people don't care. Um, instead, maybe invest that money um, somewhere else. Uh, so we've seen all these different implementations, right? Of two cameras. The first was obviously 3D and that was a massive failure. But at least that's a cool idea. Like it's, it, it's, Is a, it though? it's, it's kind of a cool idea. Like if the cameras weren't crap, maybe the 3D imagery might've been sweet. Okay. The problem with uh, the 3D Evo, right? Is that they tried to make the display 3D. <laughs> yeah, they did. That's the it'll, mistake. It'll one too. I don't even remember what it was called, but it was terrible too. Yeah, so if you take 3D images, that's cool. Allow the phone to process them and then upload them to some site or some social media thing where you can at least experience them better than you can on a freaking 3D display on a, on a cell phone, which is total garbage. And, and don't make me have to wear glasses to look at it either. That's stupid too. <laughs> but the idea of taking 3D pictures is cool. I like that. Um, what I... Yeah, what I don't like is uh, you know, being able to take, say, wide angle or more wide angle shots or, you know, being able to do groofies and, and stuff like that. Like, I don't, groofy. yeah, I mean, I don't care. I don't have that many friends to put into a groofie anyway. <laughs> so it, for me, it's pretty much always a selfie because <laughs> I'm alone. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, so we had 3D and then HTC did their depth thing where you could refocus after the fact. That was just cool. so limited and who limited cares, right? Cool. That's also a cool idea though, being able to focus after, after the fact. But then again, we had the ability to do it, but we never used it. Right. So again, a lot, of, uh, a lot of ideas that sound cool on paper and then once they implement them, give it to the public, no one cares. Well, so LGs, and I know you just crapped on this, the wide angle thing's actually kind of cool. Mm. Like you could take wide That's angle right. photos and they're actually kind of cool. I don't know. That's one of the it. first, but at the same time, like we had to go with a really ugly design to get that, right? Yeah, so. I would rather just take a panoramic shot. Like if I want- but you See, know, you can do that without like sweeping. You just snap, boom, panoramic shot right there. I like. I like sweeping. I mean, it's cool. Everyone knows that I'm taking a panorama when they see me doing this. They're like, what does I want? It's like I do have to hope it shot. stitches it together properly and all that crap. This thing, not. Nah, the software is getting pretty darn good at stitching these days. I will say that. And then also, um, I don't know if you have Photosphere or anything recently, but <laughs> Photosphere software has actually come a long ways too. Um, that stuff is in my good. backyard, I think, actually. Yeah, I've taken some Photospheres over the past year and they're really good. So good if you're ever out and about on a hike or something at the top of a cliff, photosphere that bad boy and share it with the world. Well, uh, well so with the Huawei P9, they put a monochrome camera <laughs> and then a regular one. And so one of their selling points was like they can judge color better and do better contrast and low light and all that stuff. And some of the first pictures I've seen look kind of cool, but they seriously put a black and white camera in there, <laughs> which you could then take some really cool black and white photos, right? Totally. Because totally. it'll it only knows how to take those if you want it to instead of putting a black and white filter. But yeah, it's just another one of those like, do I need that second? Do I do I really need that second camera? I'm not Ansel Adams. Like, I don't need a camera that only shoots black and white. What the hell? Maybe, I'm not, maybe you don't know yet. Maybe yeah, you need a out. wide angle, black and white <laughs> Ansel Adams signed certified. <laughs> yeah, if I was at Yosemite every other day, I would totally love a black and white monochrome camera. <laughs> That's just not the, not the case. So yeah, I get it. I do love some Ansel Adams, though. Hopefully, uh, Google doesn't put two cameras in their HTC Nexus phone. That would suck. That would suck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Not to be um, a total hater, but... All right. It's okay. The dual camera thing, I don't really get either for the most part. Man. So, all right. Uh, any apps or games you want to talk about? Uh, apps, one huge one. The official Reddit app finally launched for Android, now available on Google Play. Where else would it be? Um it's so That's, bad. <laughs> it's not the worst Reddit app I've ever used, but it's definitely not the best. I mean, it just doesn't have any features that all the other really good ones have. Third exactly. Party apps have, yeah. You know, I think they've had time to work on theirs. Well, I mean, what am I saying? Reddit has had years to work on theirs, but uh, <laughs> so it is official at least. So I think maybe in the future, because the Reddit community is very vocal. And they will let Reddit know what the problems are. And I think they'll see to it that they get fixed. And uh, more features will come. So yeah. 
if you're someone who likes official applications and you know you don't want your data uh, possibly at harm by third-party developers who, who knows where they are and uh, then you know I would suggest using the official reddit application um, for handing out your reddit gold and upvoting and downvoting and all that and um, there's a few subreddits that are a lot of fun Android uh, I love the reddit uh, com, the subreddit uh, Google Play Deals. I actually find a lot of uh, cool movies that are on sale through there, um, albums that are free that pop up, uh, a lot of stuff that doesn't get promoted right on Google Play's front page. So Google Play Deals is a good one. So Reddit is such a crazy place. And uh, <laughs> this app doesn't even break the skin. Um, but I think it'll get better. So it'll that's probably get better. Yeah. yeah, that's one app I wanted to talk about. And I guess one last app that I had, what it's called StockX. If you if you collect sneakers or are a sneakerhead, a fan of sneaker culture or anything, I uh, you can check out StockX, aka Campless. Um, it allows you to basically track the street value, uh, the market value of your of your kick collection. Uh, <laughs> and it's all done through eBay data, um, verified sales. It's a cool way of knowing how much you've spent on shoes, how much you can get if you sell all your shoes and all that. So if you're into shoes, you can check out StockX. A lot of people did not like that post yesterday. They're like, oh, I have so many other important things I could be doing right now than reading about this shoe app. I'm like, dude, what? Then go do it. God, people, people yeah, then go people. read something else. It's yeah. actually, because uh, yeah, I used to use Campless before I became StockX and it, I love that. It's, it's so cool. I mean, obviously I'm a shoe guy too, but it's actually pretty cool to see like the trends in your shoes. And then, yeah, when you put in your whole shoe collection, if you have one and see how much money you've wasted on sneakers. <laughs> totally. Yeah. It's, it's a blast. And, and then look, you have to be a shoe guy to get it. If you're not a shoe guy, you obviously will think it's stupid, but which is totally actually, fine. Right. It's totally so, fine. Yeah. I'm not totally judging fine. you if you're not a shoe guy. Yeah. But please don't judge us. <laughs> right. Let us have our passions. You may like knives or something. I don't know. <laughs> no, yeah, like what, are you? Shoes. what are you yeah. a freak? You carver, <laughs> you whittle on sticks. <laughs> Everyone's got their every beats of a, of a different drum, so we're all different yet all the same. Joe J says he's got Yeezys in the closet with McFlies. You're a That's, liar. Yeah, right. Yeah, we need picture of that now. <laughs> or I don't believe you. No one's got McFlies and Yeezys in the same closet, <laughs> unless your name is a Perfect Pair. Or is this Joe? <laughs> and the basketball player oh, like, okay. who are you yeah. okay <laughs> he says he's got them jays in the closet too retros <laughs> <laughs> oh that's good yeah that'd be awesome man you got us on uh oh, on twitter says, okay pictures we're holding on now until yeah. joe jay at tim otato on twitter or uh, at oh, droid right. underscore life on twitter instagram yeah. whatever we are there please I would. I mean, I love seeing people's shoes. So, but we need. We also need the like handwritten tag that says yep. Joe J in the picture. You can't just Google yes. this and send us one. <laughs> I will be able to to know. So, cool. Yeah. So, Stock X. If you are, I got McFlies. <laughs> yeah, totally. Steven Silver. Everyone's got McFlies. Apparently, everyone. <laughs> yeah. So. StockX, if you're big into shoes and being nerdy about sneakers, then StockX is definitely the app to check out. Sweet stuff. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, Kanye, speaking of Yeezys, Kanye's album's now on Google Play. <laughs> After saying it was never coming to Apple Music, all sorts of big things happening. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> the chat is now going south on shoes. We'll take some pics with my name and some sweet. Good job, Joe J. I'm excited for Joe J now. Like the fact yeah. that the dude actually has what sounds like a Possibly legit sneaker has. collection is yeah. exciting because we just never know. We're in this tech sphere and Tim and I happen to be shoe guys, but you just never know if anybody else is that well, we hang out thing. with. Yeah. So a couple of people in the comments on that post, they actually come and they're like, wow, you know, I, I like shoes. I actually appreciate this post. And I'm like, yeah, there you go. See, there's some people yeah. um, or say in our reviews, well, sometimes you'll take a picture of some old Jordan threes or something, uh, some true blues. And someone will be down in the comments saying, oh man, I love them true blues. And it's nice. It's a fellow appreciator of, you know, the work that Nike and Jordan do. Yeah. So don't be haters. Steph Curry fans. Man. <laughs> Just because you hate the look of shoes and buy Under Armour. Whatever. <laughs> 
those are some some under armor shots fired which i will 100 percent agree with yeah <laughs> he's a higher designer stop acquiring companies uh all right cool well <laughs> we should wrap up unless you got anything else no that'll do i hope everyone has a good safe weekend watch them trailblazers take out the clippers this weekend nba playoffs that's right start tomorrow Go All Blazers. Right. Go Blazers. All right, cool. Well, uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. It's been episode 106. Which your life, peace. See if I can find the end button. <laughs>